Hello and welcome to Brenda Awareness episode 8. I'm Brenda Vaisha and I have not been recording for two weeks and I feel a little guilty about it. Um, it was a mixture of do you even want my apologies or like my not it's not apologies, excuses. Um, yeah, I feel like I should tell you I've been a little bit sick and then a little bit under the weather and I feel like everyone who's self-employed you have to keep yourself responsible. That is, I would never, I would never be jealous of anyone who doesn't work for themselves because I am living my dream life. But sometimes it does get hard being responsible for yourself and keeping yourself on track and not just, I don't know. Um, so I've been having a little under the weather week. I do feel better now. I have been recording the episode once and then I abandoned it after 20 minutes. It was such a fail and I was so negative. And then I told myself, obviously, this podcast has turned into a little bit of a motivational speech. And I, while I love that, I also do want to keep it real. But finding the balance of like keeping it real, but I don't want to be negative either. I've, yeah, I don't know. I don't really know where I stand on how much realness I want to show not that I'm fake but I feel like yeah I didn't feel like filming when I was being negative but also I do want to let you in that sometimes obviously I don't have great weeks either hi my chats summer is coming in to say hi hi good girl summer was feeling sick as well and um, if you're a dog parent you know this ruins the whole week I was so worried about her she wasn't eating but now she's all better hi shatsy anyways I want to talk about setting myself up for failure. Um, so the response for the podcast has been amazing, like so amazing. I've had the most heartfelt messages. I've had people come up to me on the street and I feel like I'm especially proud of the last two episodes, I think. However, I think they're so good and full of knowledge and information. And it was kind of like giving lecture vibes that I want to turn it down a notch and not self set myself up for failure so I don't want anyone so basically I'm here to say let's keep the bar on the floor for me <laughs> I don't really do very well with compliments I'll get back to that and I feel like I set myself up for this like every episode is the most informative most funny most motivational most emotional episode and sometimes I don't want to do that so I want to yeah let's keep the bar on the floor for me I'm hoping that this episode is actually shit and that you will listen to me anyways because yeah the better it is I want to like then I have like pressure on myself that every episode is changing your life and that's actually not what I want to do I hope that you will listen to me yeah regardless and that I'm going back to square one what is my goal for the for each episode I hope that brand awareness is just a comfort listen to you and sometimes you'll get some knowledge or some humor and sometimes you will just get me and I am a little bit still like lights on but no one's home mood I'm also thinking I didn't press play on the video should I just keep going or should I check I don't know uh, someone told me um in the last video when I did that when I checked sorry about my foot noise as well so I'm wearing heels I don't know I felt like dressing up today I'm going for a little lunch after someone told me like yeah babe that's like ADHD and you have tics so yeah, I love a self-diagnose. I don't know if I have to say that, but like diagnosing someone else on the internet, I like my like ego is fine. You can tell me all the illnesses that I have, but don't you think that's like a little bit rude? Just because I can laugh about myself doesn't mean you, I don't know. Anyways, um, so I don't really do very well with compliments and it's something I try to change in my life. My management has seen me cry one time and I think this is either one and a half years or two years ago. And it was in a time where I was in Paris, it was fashion week and it was kind of, I mean, you never know. I think that's uh, something that a lot of people wonder, do you notice momentum when it's happening, right? Like, do you notice you're in the moment when the moment is happening? And in this moment, it was kind of, I don't, I hope I don't have a peak in my career. I hope that it is stable, but this was one of the first times where during fashion week, I got a lot of coverage, way more pictures taken of myself. I don't want to say fans, followers, you know, audience coming up to me in the street, um, 
memes about Brenda hashtag era. Like this is when like everything kind of started. And so many people came up to me, also industry people in that week of Paris Fashion Week saying like, oh my God, like this is your moment. How are you using your moment? And what happens a lot to, I think a lot of creative people or artists or influencers, whatever, the public attention versus the jobs you're getting, these things are never aligned. Um, you're ha you might have a big moment online and then it takes six months for someone uh, at a commercial brand to notice you or you're in the PDFs, like in the decks and someone's presenting you and then they're declining you. And then, you know, it's like, it's never aligned. And in this particular moment, attention on me was very high. What I, that's what I felt like. But it was not at all matching up with job offers or me making money. And um, with every compliment that I got on the street, like, you're doing amazing, this is your moment, I was A, thinking, I hope this is not my moment. I hope I don't have a moment. I hope I have, or I hope I have so many moments, but I hope, you know, this is a stable career that I want, not a moment. And with every compliment, the I, I put more pressure on myself, like, oh my God, I have to perform, I have to use this, I have to use this, what does it mean making use of this? Like, do I have to date a celebrity? Like, what do you mean use this moment? And um, at this point, also my management told me, you know, at some point we have to put out like some kind of product or something for people to get excited for. Um, I had just started, yeah, I think this is more than two, two years ago. I had started writing for Author Juicy, but my texts weren't in the magazine yet. Like there was nothing for people to really... Um, yeah, support me with and this was the last moment where really like I broke down from pressure and um, a similar thing happened with the podcast but not like way less dramatic but the more compliments I got and um, I got the sweetest messages basically of how I'm like changing someone's life and how it motivates them to be better or to try harder or to find their dream career and I should be taking these compliments like, oh my God, this is amazing. What a, I have a positive influence on someone. But no, my brain goes, oh fuck, th there's pressure now. You have to change someone's life and every episode has to be better than the next one. And obviously that is not the reality of what this podcast, what I want this podcast to be and what I want this podcast to do for you. And yeah, I just got a little bit in my head. And I'm not sure if I've talked about this before in the podcast, but there's amazing, amazing YouTube videos on accepting, comp it sounds so cringe, right? But it's accepting compliments and t taking up space. And um, I feel like maybe I have talked about this. Anyways, I especially love the videos on taking up space as a woman, like taking up physical space, the way you enter a room, how you say hi to people. And these are very trivial, trivial things, but I try to watch these videos once a year. Um, it's very easy to find them. It's um, corporate situation, meeting situations, um, not going into a room and just sitting down and like, especially women, you know, we have our legs, legs crossed. We want to make ourselves, we, we, we're doing the opposite of man spreading. And um, I'm trying to learn these taking up space methods. And I think there's nothing worse than the woman who is deserving of a compliment and is just going, oh my God, no, it, it was so cheap. No, 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 the, the outfit's secondhand. I'm wearing it for the 15th time, actually. Oh my God, no, 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 I just, like, it's just the lighting. Like, no, someone did my makeup. No, 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 I just got my hair done. Like, this is why I'm looking good. Like, completely deflecting or not being able to take a compliment without giving one back. And this is something that I'm really trying to change about myself is accepting, maybe praise sounds a little bit cringe, but you know, when, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm having, maybe this is not a relatable thing, but, I think this can be applied to anything, but I'm having, when I'm having um, an, I don't want to say audience member, I'm trying so hard. You see, like, this is my problem. I'm saying, trying so hard to avoid the word fan. Like, why is it, why, why, what's so cringe about me accepting that I have one or two fans? I don't know. It makes me like, ugh, about myself. But when I run into, I'm going to say it, fan on the street and, um, the first thing I, I do when I'm getting a compliment is like, oh my God, I'm loving, I, I, I love your shoes. I love your, <laughs> like deflecting attention away from me. And um, especially my friends when they're with me noticing this, they're like, what is going on with her? Like, why is she screaming in their face? Um, but yeah, so long story short, I love the podcast. Let's keep the bar on the floor. Um, I'm trying to accept a compliment about it, but um, yeah. So I hope that this episode is really shit and then I hope that everyone who sticks around is just around for me talking about 
whatever I want to talk about. Should I take check the time? Okay, it is now 12. Got it. Um, I want to do a little bit of housekeeping with you and then I have some topics that I brainstormed with my friends about. Okay, housekeeping. I don't know if I told you. Also, okay, now I'm really ranting. I don't know. I don't think I want to talk about current like fashion things or current things on the podcast because I am hoping that the podcast is not like a weekly news. I want to talk about whatever. So I don't want to talk, be here, talk about... Um, Virginie Viard is leaving Chanel and who's the next person because then in like four weeks this is like an irrelevant podcast so I want to keep it kind of timely uh, timeless sorry not timely um either way collecting fashion the book by Alexander Carl Alexander Carl just came out and I it's my first time having my text in a book like in a printed book I, I'm in a bunch of magazines but my writing I did an interview with someone really fabulous so the the name of the book is quite literal collecting fashion it's about fashion collectors it's a Rizzoli book Rizzoli the publisher it's such a big deal for me to be next to the editors that I look up to and the writers that I look up to and um, it's out now and I hope that you get it because there's so many amazing people in there who have amazing stories about their fashion collecting and how they got into it and um, yeah so collecting fashion book is right out now oh 30 to see book book oh my god also, to see magazine is also out right now. This is not a timeless thing that I'm saying, but either way. And my interview with Jun Takahashi is in there that I did in Tokyo. And it's one of my goal interviews of life and someone who doesn't do a lot of interviews. And it was the best time ever. And he was so lovely. I'm about to go to Paris, actually. And he's doing he's back on the men's work calendar, which is quite exciting. So oh, 30 to see is out. If I were to choose a cover, if I were you, I would get Kate Upton. Um, so legendary that she came back for all 30 to see and the cover is amazing started by my friend Raz who's our fashion director and yeah we also have uh, me saying like I want a timeless episode and I'm giving you all of my schedule but we also have a fashion show next week all 30 to see on Rick Owens day during men's fashion week in Paris which is really excited exciting um other housekeeping okay I am in the FAZ Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung um, list of the 50 most important or influential Germans in fashion for the second time in a row, which is super, 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 super exciting. It is basically a list of, yeah, some of the most incredible names or successful people in fashion that are German. And last year, yeah, I had no idea I was gonna be in it last year for the first time on place 43. And it was a big surprise and such an honor. And um, this year I'm, on there for the second time and this just came out and a lot of my friends are on it as well and yeah it's I don't know I like can't believe my life so that happened also I want <laughs> I'm really just like a character of myself timeless episode one more <laughs> thing in July I'm planning to do a closet sale I've been like sorting out also I want to move at some point maybe this year into my new apartment whole other story I've been trying to sort out my closet just to downsize a little bit because it has been getting out of hand. I do want to admit this. And um, I want to do a closet sale because I was trying to sell online, but it's like so much effort and then like sending it and the environmental cause and like all of this stuff. And it just doesn't, I don't know. It's a lot of, mostly it's the effort part. So I'm hoping that the date is July 14th, which should be a Sunday. I didn't fact check any of this. This is just what I wrote down. It's probably in Kreuzberg in my friend's studio. Um, so keep an eye out for that and then also I don't know if you guys know this but on my website brandahasha.com I have shopping curations for the person that is too lazy to be on essence page 73 or not just too lazy sometimes like, like sh shopping online can be very overwhelming so I have shopping curations for essence and for my Teresa men's and women's I change the password on it once a week or once every two weeks as you're listening to this right now I think the password is Beach goth, spelled like together, no no space. Um, but yeah, you have to the the the, pa oh, the password is usually in my broadcast channel, brandcast, like on my Instagram, and sometimes I post it on Twitter as well. But basically, it's just Brenda approved items, like everything I would buy, everything I have bought, things I can recommend, brands that I like. It's a mix of high end things, and I wouldn't say cheaper, but like entry level. So there's that. I don't know if I've ever talked about this on the, on the podcast, but 
it's on my website and you can, I mean, it's pretty easy. Sometimes if you can't find the password anywhere, you can also email me. Um, I don't know if you know, but I do not see Instagram DMs. It says message me, but it never lands. Like this just goes into the universe. I've disabled um, any message requests just because, um, I don't know, I find it a bit overwhelming. Okay, other question was, how do you shop? Um, okay, obviously almost all things I buy are secondhand. Um, and I, sh I often see videos on TikTok that are like, here are the keywords, um, it's kind of like AI prompt, here are the keywords, the brands that you need to be looking for to get this kind of style. Um, so I shop on eBay, I shop on eBay Kleinanzeigen, which is a local eBay, I shop on Vestia, and now that I have a man in New York, I also shop on the real real because I get to ship it to his house. Um, long story short, there is no shortcut for shopping secondhand and finding a good price. Um, you have to know what you're looking for. And I am a nerd. This is my whole life. I have, I mean, I do recommend you get the Vogue Runway app, you know, so you can look up older stuff. But the only way to get a good price is that the seller doesn't know what they're selling. Like if you, you know, like me, you want to get like runway pieces. There is no shortcuts of um, here's what to look out for. Oh my God, my there's cleaning going on in my house and I don't know if you can hear the Hoover now for the rest of the episode. Uh, anyways, we'll just move on. Um, yeah, so how I shop is I have accounts with all on eBay, on eBay clients, on Vestia. I have saved searches. This is a really good feature on Vestia Collective, I feel like. You can save a search and then you can get alerts if a new item drops. Like you can say Chanel bag, black between um, 800 and 2000 euros and uh, fabric and whatever. And then you get notified as soon as something like this lands on their app or website. And I think that's the best feature ever. So. I, you have to know what you're looking for, first of all. So there's no shortcut. You have to know the collections. You have to know specific um, years that you're looking for. But I think this information is quite easy to gather. I am also on Pinterest and Tumblr every day. I have all things saved. I have mood boards um, and that helps me not buy anything that I don't need. Oh, the hover is coming closer. I can try to move my microphone a little bit closer. Also. I really have ADHD. Have I told you about my favorite pen ever? It's so chic if you're watching um, on video. I'm holding it in my hand. It is called Uniball I Micro Mitsubishi Pencil CO Limited, made in Japan. I buy these, actually it's one of my Amazon purchases. I buy like 10 of them every six months because I also give them out to people. It is the best pen ever. Unless you're dragging your hand on the paper, then it can, is it smear? Oh no, I really, I'm a bit worried about this Hoover situation. Okay, and then how I shop when it's not secondhand. My most used, first of all, I like people asking me for like shopping recommendations in Berlin. I don't leave my house. I think, I've, I'm sorry, I do want to support brick and mortar, but I shop online only because it's the better prices. Offer me something better in brick and mortar. I'm sorry. Um, I am keeping the eBay app alive. Uh, I shop, if it's new, I shop on Essence and My, My Teresa, but I have accounts on Essence, My Teresa, Luisa Viaroma, The Outnet, Ukes, and did I say Netapota? I think those are it. I would say make accounts with all of the e-tailers, download the app, notifications on, put the things you want in the wish list, and you get notified when the price drops. Like there's, it's so easy you know all of these e-tailers are now basically like everything's on sale at all times which means the vicious cycle of like things are getting more expensive because we now need to make a profit off of the sale price anyways make accounts make wish lists turn your notifications on i know it's annoying but if you wanna well it's not shopping is never saving money right like i don't want to over promote consumption here but it is not hard to not pay full retail and I, even though I have money to shop, I still always Google my Teresa code, Essence code, Netaporto code. I always try to sign up with a new email to newsletter for the 10% off. Because if, if it's a thousand euro product, you're saving a hundred euros. Like, hello. So I think with, when it comes to like shopping like this, like just don't be lazy. And also putting things in your wish list. If they're gone the next season and they sold out on full price, I don't think you've missed out. A good product is still a good product next year and um, sometimes things come back and I try to not buy seasonal products, but the products that are in store all time, you know, like the 
best sellers. Um, so yeah, make accounts with all of the apps. I don't have any games on my phones, but I do have all of the shopping apps to get notified when something's on sale. Yeah, my rule number one is don't pay retail price because things are so crazy expensive. Maybe I shouldn't be saying this while working in fashion, but um, yeah, make accounts with everyone. Okay, um, what else did I write down? Figuring out how to promote brand awareness. Great topic, Brenda. Help me, please. Okay, so um, the initial signups and subscribers um, it went really fast for brand awareness. I see, I think now there's like 10,000 people on Spotify. I, I see 5,000 people on YouTube. I see Apple Podcasts is like shit with their insights. Also, they haven't been letting me upload in three weeks or a month. Whole other topic. Um, so I saw like a very high rise. And then obviously it's not a plateau, but things slow down because the initial like, oh my God, she has a podcast. Obviously this wears down. And because I don't really listen to podcasts, I also don't know what promotes a podcast obviously now i'm editing and I'm, I'm hoping to find an editor to make like short clips that i can post on tiktok on reels but that's really my only kind of promotion and because also people have been asking me do you want guests on the podcast not really i always think i think there's very few things more cringe on a podcast than when you can tell that two managers have set up their talents to be on a podcast together and they've never interacted in real life and they don't even know anything about each other i think these are so as someone with, with social anxiety, I can only listen to co-hosts who really are friends in real life, who have a synergy. So this whole like, there's no shade, but like Emrata with like a random other celebrity and then uh, just like talking about what's your book coming out? Like that's my, that's the last thing I want. So um, yes, at some point, maybe spontaneously, I want to have like a really, really, really good friend on. Um, but that's about it. I really want to keep it simple. Also, it means hassle, right? Like you have to organize the meeting. You have to maybe talk to someone's manager. It's all about scheduling. Maybe then they want to listen to it. My whole thing is that this episode is unedited. You know, I just like, I record and then I send it to my assistant who cuts off the first 10 seconds of me like walking to sit down and then the last 10 seconds of me clicking stop on the camera. So I don't think I want to have guests. Anyways, promoting the podcast. I don't really know. Maybe I should, should know this, but I also think like ignorance is bliss sometimes. I don't really know what makes a podcast grow. I don't want to do any advertisements on this. I don't want to get a sponsor. Um, my management so far is like not involved with the podcast because I really want to do it on my own. So besides these like real um, and TikTok clips, I don't, I have no idea how and is... Okay, and then I'm also thinking, even if my reel of me talking about a random topic on the podcast gets um, 100,000 views, how do I tell people, like, this is a podcast? Is there any follow through? Will they, like, then just because they've seen, because I scroll on TikTok, right? And then I watch, I don't know, I'm scrolling and there's like Tana Mongeau and it's like her and what's her co-host Brooke talking about something and it's like super engaging and I love it. But then after the video, I still keep swiping. I'm not like, oh my God, let me Google this podcast now and listen to the whole episode. So yeah, I don't know if anyone has any idea. Maybe I'm also just doing fine and I shouldn't be worried about how to promote it because I had a meeting with Apple and all they told me was like, just keep going. It's amazing. Just keep going. So maybe I should not um, think about things so much and how to promote it. But yeah, I don't really know how that works. Um, okay, then because I didn't really have a topic for this podcast, I had dinner with my friends the other night in Borchardt in Berlin, having my vegan schnitzel, and I was like, I don't really know what to talk about. I usually like to have one kind of topic. And um, I don't know how we were, how we got on the topic, but we were getting on the topic of quotes life quotes motivational quotes oh maybe because i thought like oh i don't really want this like podcast to become this motivational speech at all times and um then my friend niels was saying um how about we actually use that the motivational quotes and how about we list up some business quotes and motivational quotes super mainstream ones and you dissect them and talk about what you think about them is this making sense anyways i have a list of whatever 10 quotes <laughs> And I have not made any notes about them. We just wrote them down and then I'm going to spontaneously react to them. This seems like so planned out and like I know what I'm talking about, but not at all. I really just wrote down these sentences. Anyways, shut up, Brenda. Okay. First of all, know your audience. 
I think this is the, one of the most important things in life. And whenever, okay, my first, I can talk about how I was in school in another episode because I was shit and almost failed every year. And the first time I ever felt passionate about the subject was when I went to school in the UK and I had business studies. And this was my first time where I was like, oh my God, maybe I'm an entrepreneur. I'm really not, but I, was a re- I had a really, really great teacher and a really great experience. Anyways, this taught me, and this led me later on to study business actually. And um, know your audience. We had like a kind of small marketing class. And um, what my teacher there taught me was it doesn't matter how much budget you have for an advertising agency, how much budget you have for models, how much budget you have for this and this and this, like copywriters, you have to know who you're targeting. You have to do a little like sheet of demographics, like who am I targeting for my communication, for my product? And I see this all the time because now I have a little, I have a few friends in, not a few, I have very few friends in venture capital and private equity. And they always talk to me about startups and who's raising and all of these great ideas. And I always think, but who's this for? And I think not knowing who you're talking to is the biggest failure or reason to fail for any startups, you know, just like we're making money and our product is great, but who are you targeting this at? And knowing your audience, I think is one of the most important things ever. To me, if I think about myself, mm, I want to know exactly what does my audience look like? What are they interested in? Like, how can I contribute positively to their life? Obviously, you also think about what can I sell to them? But I think that comes a little bit later stage. But I see so many influencers also not in touch with their audience at all. And I think this is especially difficult when you go through a change yourself. Like maybe you're a very commercial influencer and all of a sudden you get into Rick Owens, you know, your audience will not care. Like having a shift, you know, audience building an audience is kind of what is a positive word for grooming like you're um i don't think there is a positive word for grooming but you are getting people used to you right and you cannot just have like drastic switches same way that i um would not go fully commercial right now and just do like here's my sketchers advertisement you know it doesn't make sense for my audience and i think knowing your audience is one of the most important things it's who are you talking to Do you know this TikTok song? Who are you talking to right now? But um, yeah, I cannot emphasize this enough. Know who you're talking to. And if this is, you know, you're doing your Instagram and it's um, it's your photography account. Are you talking to magazines? Are you talking, like, is it wedding photography? Like, who who do you actually want to see your content? I think this is one of the most important things ever. Okay, second one. Fake it till you make it. I think this is a, oh, there's a fly in here disgusting I hate flies did I tell you about this yeah fake it till you make it okay there's two sides I think sometimes and maybe I shouldn't tell you guys these things but I think sometimes these things can work like I know personally I cannot fake anything I'm not this kind of person like if I don't like you I don't like you like it's very visible on me if I don't but that I've also made that my personal brand right I've used that to my advantage um but I know influencer girls who were at 200,000 followers and then just bought the last 800 and now it's a million. And at some point, at the first, like it was sketchy, but also if you're working with agencies, sometimes they don't really check and they don't really care. They just want to propose to the client. Like we have all these girls with a million followers. And I know like one girl that's done that and now she's sitting front row at Prada because yeah, maybe her engagement isn't there and she's hiding all her likes, but her content's actually good. She looks amazing. She looks amazing in all the samples. She's a super socialite, good with everyone. Like these things can work. I also have heard a fun rumor about someone that's one of the most like up and coming, already super popular um, in the German space, but influencer girls. And I have heard, this is so fun, that she made a, um, what's it called? Dating app, T- I'm like Tumblr, Tinder tinder account with i don't know if it was like bikini pictures but like cute pictures of herself and um i'm guessing she put the like location on like as wide as possible and age as wide as possible and all of the settings and then just had her instagram in her bio and that's how she got her first few thousand followers and now she's at you know her content's actually amazing and she's really hustling and she's doing the work and the other audience followed at some point but now sometimes you need a kickstarter Maybe I shouldn't be teaching you guys these things, but honestly, I believe in like the girl boss of it all. Like it's the client who's stupid, who doesn't see through the fake followers. So I always think, you know, go off. And um, personally, I, 
I don't know, I believe in faking a smile to yourself, for example. I believe in like smiling, fake smiling until you're actually smiling for real. I believe in sometimes like getting up even though I don't want to go up and meeting my friend for coffee because I'm in a super bad mood and I'm just like pretending my day is normal and sometimes I can trick myself into having a good mood or having a normal day. So in that case, I do believe in fake it till you make it. Besides that, I think at some point, most people can kind of cut through the bullshit at this point. Um, I know if, you know, it also influencer wise is if, if like the girl is just like hiding her likes and hiding, I don't know. But I do know also you can turn an influencer job into something way bigger, you know. You might just be um, booked for a little bag activation at Prada, but you yourself book or get your friend to do it like a photographer and make it into a campaign. And if other brands don't notice that it's not actually a campaign but a back activation, that's on them. So I like this kind of going above and beyond attitude. I personally don't do that. I wish I did though. Um, for me, it's the iPhone pictures, but I like the fake it till you make it, you know? Um, as long as you're not inconveniencing anyone else. Like I don't really understand when someone is like moving up rows and fashion shows and pretending to be front row when they were standing. Like all of this stuff, I think that's a bit rude because PRs and brands work really hard on their seating chart and people work really hard their entire lives to sit in the front row. I think this kind of stuff is really rude. But beyond that, I don't know. You let me know about fake it till you make it. I don't know if I have other examples. Um, dress for the job you want. Such a cheesy sentence, but I stand on this 100%. I, I mean, I think you can... I don't know, I don't, unless you have no budget for, for fashion whatsoever, but I think not utilizing the weapon that is an outfit, to me that's insane. How, like, making your, not even just looking better, but making yourself more confident. What a good outfit, whatever good means to me, right, but what a good outfit does, outfit does to my self-confidence, it's unmatched. Walking into a room and knowing like I feel good about myself and I look good, that changes your entire vibe, how you approach people, how you let others approach you. Um, so dressing for the job you want, maybe I don't have my dream job at the moment or like a you know career goal, but I think dressing well also doesn't depend on crazy brands, you know, you can, you can get everything secondhand also with the right effort and knowing what you look for, like I mentioned earlier. Yeah, I don't understand how you, how someone cannot utilize, especially if you work in the creative space, not utilize fashion for themselves. It is such, it is an armor, it's something that protects you, it's something that makes you either approachable or unapproachable. Like if you don't want anyone to talk to you, you dress in the all rig and you, you know, you can mask so much insecurity with fashion. Um, yeah, I think to me it's one of the most important things. And by now, I'm at the point where, you know, I walk into any event and I know people in there or I'm also fine with, you know, not giving, not caring if anyone knows me and walking to an event and getting my picture taken and walking out without talking to anyone. But I think um, fashion helps me with that, knowing that I myself feel good at this moment. I don't know, I, I yeah, I really don't understand how people refuse to use fashion as their weapon. Doesn't make any sense to me. Anyway, so dress for the job you want 100%. Um, rotten fruit will always fall on its own. I also really believe in that. I think, especially in personal life, you know, it's kind of the um, waiting for the guy to cheat on you, waiting for the friend to betray you. You don't need to use any force to make these things happen. They will, whether or not you worry about them, they will happen on its own. If you have a bad feeling about someone, they will happen on its own. I also think you don't need to end someone's friendship. You can let things fizzle out if someone doesn't make you feel good, you know? I Yeah, I 100% believe, but that maybe rotten fruit is also, it's the overall thing of like the universe will sort itself out for you, you know? You don't need to apply all of this pressure and people who are not meant to be in your life, something will happen for them to not be in your life. Um, yeah, I really believe in that. Um, you meet everyone twice. I don't think this is exactly how the saying this goes. You meet everyone twice in life. Maybe it's that. Um, yeah, 100%. I can, um, personal experience wise, you know, I was a lot more outspoken and angry on social media a few years ago, but 
being angry, I mean, yeah, it comes from anger of being like, why am I not invited into these spaces? I deserve this, I deserve this. Why am I not invited to the show? Why didn't I blah, blah, blah. And fashion is such a small bubble. So any brand that I've ever talked bad about, there was a designer there or there was a PR girl there that's now at the next brand that I want to work with. And they're like, no, you need to, like people will always remember. And um, fashion is a very personal thing in the end. So, you know, when I had my huge, uh, Bottega scandal, actually really funny that I'm wearing like Daniel Lee heels right now, when I had this Bottega scandal, don't look this up please, but you know, th it's an amazing fashion house, so of course there's like 60 people working there at the time that, that now are at all of these other amazing brands that are still salty about this, even though I was talking about a brand, but I was affecting real jobs, you know, so you always have to be aware of these things, and um, yeah, it doesn't mean I still don't criticize brands, but I do it in a more nuanced way and uh, yeah I think you learn this the hard way you you meet everyone twice and you know like people being rude to people at the people at the door at fashion weeks I think this is like the most stupid thing you can do personally also just for like being a decent human being but you know any PR, PR girl at the door in two years she will be at a more important door like are you like this is, it's to me this is like really stupid to like let your ego out in these situations I think especially in fashion you meet everyone twice um, and I have also learned this the hard way not that I was rude to anyone but more like talking badly about brands because there's always a, a I don't know the collections that I've ripped to shreds, there was always like a junior designer that was just doing that job and was happy to be at the brand that is now still like, oh my God, Brenda hashtag is a bitch. So yes, um, the early bird catches the worm. Okay, this is a huge German empire for me. I'm German, so I'm super punctual. However, there's limits to this stuff. And I think especially in creative industries, um, if you are a makeup artist for celebrities or a hairstylist for celebrities and you're going to Le Maurice to do their hair for the Dior show, you arrive on time, but you do not arrive a minute earlier, especially with super busy people or celebrities. Maybe they wanted to sleep in and then if you're there knocking on the door 10 minutes early, I would consider that, that almost rude because that person is still doing their stuff. And I also think you, unless you're best friends, but you would never arrive when someone's hosting you, you would never arrive 20 minutes early or 10 minutes early. The p person might still be hoovering. So I think the early bird, I don't know. Then when it comes to, you know, business ideas and trends and whatever, yes, the early bird catches a worm, but honestly, no, I think whoever does it better catches the worm, you know? I think um, you might have the most genius business idea, but if there's one, if there's another person with the exact same idea and they are more resourceful or they have better connections or they're a better socializer and they're speaking to the more important people who give them the money or give them the other connections, I don't think necessarily just because you're the first that you will succeed. I think it's always nice to be, especially in my job, to be like at the, to point your finger at what is happening, to be on top of zeitgeist, but I also think you can be your own zeitgeist, honestly. Um, I don't think that the early bird always catches the worm. I think in German, we have the saying, like, a good horse jumps only as high as it must, you know, in the race. Like, you don't always have to go above and beyond. Maybe also all of the settings are, like, contradicting. I love to be a hypocrite. Um, yeah, I don't think the early bird always catches the worm. I think whoever does it best, and that's it, you know? I think it, you can have the most genius idea, but then, exactly, if it's, like, you know, my first sentence, know your audience. If you don't know who you're targeting doesn't really matter if you were there first with your business idea or with your brand and um, I think there were also like there were brands like kind of like the row out there but their marketing and how they do their stores and how they speak to their customers I think especially with brands there's so many other things than doing it first of course there's trademark things and who who invented the whatever flip-flop the first but besides that I think it's not about being the early bird it's about doing it right and knowing where you're headed and knowing your audience knowing your you know knowing your budget knowing who to speak to know, knowing how to socialize I think some brands are also just a success because of their network um oh my god this is like the perfect segue into your network is your net worth also really cringe saying, I have to say, but for me, that's everything. I think, especially as an influencer, unless you're um, working in PR and your only goal is like sales, 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 then you book all the right people with this amount of following who just push sales. 
but in my job you really get booked with how much people like you you know I, I think I said this before but on brand trips of course the PR is under pressure to get numbers but the PR also wants to have this trip with people that they like and with people who create a vibe and with people who um, talk to the other guests you know so I really think here networking is especially important in my in my job field it's about who you know also you're meeting everyone twice who you're being nice to who you maybe you did a favor um who yeah I really think network is everything and I think that's also the you know thing in most creative industries and maybe that's also a bad thing but you can have the most amazing you can be the most amazing painter but if you unless you are hoping to be discovered on TikTok you know if you don't know who are the galleries, who do I need to speak to, you're making it a lot harder for yourself. So yeah, I think in uh, the creative space, I really believe your network is your net worth, even though this sounds so cringe. Um, keep your friends close, keep your enemies closer. I don't think so. I think it's the best if you don't look at anyone that you don't like first of all it's depressing and I also don't think I like anger as a motivator for example you know someone telling me I can't do something I love that but beyond anything beyond that I think um, anger and hatred is really well not only bad for your self-esteem but I think it's unhealthy and um, you know I was joking about my like oh my god I have a reddit thread ha 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 I read this for one day and then I stopped obviously I'm not opening that anymore you know like obsessively looking at what bad someone has to say about you like you shouldn't do that and keeping your enemies close no I think I don't think you should be looking at anything and I don't think you should be keeping enemies close just because they're not going to stab you. I think this is also about control and letting go of control and someone who's going to do something mean to you or say something mean to you, they will, regardless of whether or not you're watching them. So this like false sense of control of like um, my enemy, I'm watching my enemy and what they're doing. I think you're just distracting yourself and this is could be a time where you could be creative yourself or where you could hustle yourself. I think this is a waste of time. Um, personally, yeah, I don't really have any enemies, but I have exes blocked, for example, to just so that I don't want to see anything. Doesn't mean I have any like anything left there to be angry at, but like I don't want to see anything. I have people muted that I can't unfollow, but usually I have the rule for myself. If someone doesn't make me feel good, I don't want to see their content or follow them. But yeah, I don't think you should keep your enemies close. But I mean, let me know when you disagree with, with me. Um, yeah, same with like, I hope there's no one like hate watching or hate listening to brand awareness. Like this is just creating, I really believe in like energy and the effect on your body, you know, and this is not a healthy thing for you to do. Um, even though it gets me views and clicks. Thank you. Um, when people show you who they are, believe them. 100%. This is, I think the first time that someone said this to me was actually my man that I'm dating. This is maybe a year ago. We were sitting at a cafe in Berlin, I think like Daluma. And I was talking to him about my guy friend that was having man problems. And he was not being being treated very nicely he was asking for emotional support from a person during kind of a breakup and they were getting ghosted and I yeah and um yeah the guy said to me when people show you who they are believe them and I repeated the sentence a few times in my head and I'm like what does this mean and I think this is really um I I don't have many regrets in life also because I don't think that's a healthy thing to do you know you shouldn't like ponder about the things that you cannot change but the only regret to me is in friendships or relationships staying when I shouldn't have stayed you know when you have and I know ignoring red flags is kind of easy when you have when you're in love or when you're excited about someone or when you see potential and I think potential is also seeing potential in someone is a very dangerous thing because you should be looking at right now what are they doing right now not what what could they be because they're not that person that they could be um, and um, the only thing I really re regret is staying when I knew deep down like this person wasn't changing and I'm not happy but I was clinging on to potential and when people show you who they are, you should believe them. Like right in this moment, if someone is not texting you back, if someone isn't giving you the time of the day, 
what are you like why are you running after them and yeah I'm often the friend that gives you the brutal advice that no one wants to hear and I know it's also hard for myself to hear this kind of stuff but yeah I I don't know I believe in this like he's just not that into you but yeah then I've also seen the TikToks commenting on these things like maybe someone has personal personal issues maybe th someone's going through a hard time in their life yeah I guess but I don't know I really believe in when people show you who they are and believe them and then my friend um <laughs> it's kind of a business quote ABC always be closing I actually don't believe in that I am, in my kind of work, I am the talent who declines, or also my management, we decline, I would say like 95% of jobs um, because they're not aligned with my values, not aligned, aligned with my payment, you know, what I expect to be paid for, for working. I also, even if it's dream client, like right now, I am about to sign something with a dream client for a dream project, but it's been two months and I know that all of the other people, I think there's four or five other people, talents doing this kind of jobs I think they all signed two months ago but um even though I really want this we are not closing until I am happy so always be closing I don't think so I think you should have your standards and you shouldn't go below them obviously if you're in you know as any creative right now if you're in, like in a financial pickle of course you accept more jobs than you usually would if you're making a ton of money I completely understand that but I don't believe in always be closing I don't know maybe I'm like completely misunderstanding the sentence also because I feel like always be closing comes from like a financial right like industry quotes I don't know where it's coming from but I don't think you should always be closing I think you should not be closing anything if you're not happy with that um and then I wrote down my own quote um I don't even know if it's a real quote I saw this I wrote this down years ago and I repeat this to myself once or twice a week how to break a pattern, respond differently. And to me, all of my problems, I mean, mostly they're self-made, first of all, all of my problems, there's a very easy solution. And if I'm ever in a rot, if I'm ever having a week of like not really leaving the house, these things happen to me, you know? And I think if I'm ever getting angry, if nothing's changing, the only thing I can do is break my own pattern and respond differently to something you know if you're repeatedly having the same argument with someone maybe how I'm reacting wasn't right either you know and I think everyone has these few topics in their life that are kind of reoccurring and you don't know how to change them and I think responding differently to a trigger is the one of the healthiest things I've learned in the last years yeah that is that I don't know how, follow how long I spoke for now, but I'm really happy to be back in my routine. I'm saying this now. Please hold me accountable if I haven't uploaded in two weeks. Um, I am, What am I doing today? It is a Friday. I'm about to have a fitting for All 32 C Show. I'm very excited. Um, I am working on a few other things for All 32 C, and then it's Fashion Week in Paris. Summer is coming. I'm very excited about that. I'm very excited to see all my friends. I've become this person that was always my goal where Fashion Week is this like reunion with your friends from all over the world. So I'm really excited to see my best friend Anna Rosa from New York. I'm really excited to see Blake, who's just coming out with another issue of a magazine curated by. So that's really exciting. Um, yeah, so that is that. I hope everyone's doing well. And I hope the bar is back on the floor for brand awareness. I hope that you just want to listen to me talk about whatever. I hope that is the common theme is whatever Brenda wants to talk about and not everything is a crazy life lesson. Um, yeah, tell me how I can promote the podcast, please. And tell me how you're doing. Mm, yeah, I think that is it for me. Love you. I hope you have a great day and goodbye.